Okay, let's try to break down the uh, BB-8 video a little bit more. Okay, so I've got a slowed down version and zoomed in here. Uh, this is from the high quality version that was from the live stream on YouTube of Star Wars Celebration Europe. So let's take a look. All right. All right, first off, here is BB-8 inside. Um, here is a zoomed in version of the flywheel and the reason I zoomed in on the flywheel down there in the bottom that's also the pendulum it's also where most of if not all of the motors live with the exception I think of the uh, continuous servo that rotates the head so that's why I zoomed in down here now let's look at it a little bit first all right these two over here these things are I would imagine there's servos behind them and each of those servos uh, are attached to two uh, bicycle motors. Oh, sorry, <laughs> they're not bicycle motors. They're two. Uh, something happened over on my 3D printer. They're attached to two um, bicycle style or cable or brake cables, and each one of them goes to one of these. One goes to this uh, wheel here, and the other one goes to this wheel over here. And the reason that there are two cables is because you can't push a cable. I mean, you sort of can, but uh, the idea is that one pushes, one pulls, so you, things are always working well. So, okay, these uh, are, for starters, important stuff. Um, there's also, you see on the back here, is where the some of the other motors are going to be. Let's play here a little bit and see what happens. All right. Now, what's what other things sort of show up? Let's, right here... This uh, motor with a red belt, that actually looks like part of this linear actuator. I assume it's part of this linear actuator here. And this linear actuator is the thing that actually pushes and tilts the body from left to right for steering purposes. Um, this motor over here looks like it runs along this geared... Um, and I'm surprised to see gears here. Uh, I mean, uh, I guess I'm, I'm not, I guess I'm surprised because we're, we're all using, um, or a lot of people are using uh, wheels here rather than gears so that uh, there's a little bit of slip on there and it doesn't have to be super accurate and noisy. I mean, maybe if we could all you know, machine that of aluminum, we could do that, but um, we're not. Uh, now, in here, you can see this timing belt. This timing belt is what goes up and drives the main shaft up here, which, well, it drives a bevel gear, which drives the main shaft across here. Now, you can see very clearly these Moflon uh, slip rings. The job of the slip rings is basically to uh, transfer electrical signals over here uh, from the non-rotating part, or the rotating, depending on which way you look at it, basically to uh, uh, attach be able to get electricity out to the, the the part without like coiling up the wires and it looks like what is what they're serving over here are these little mini led spotlights that provide the lighting inside the droid okay so down here we see what look like batteries you can see the red connection and the black connection coming off of here so i'm assuming uh, we got you know two nice banks of batteries um what else let's uh, play it again all right is a pretty good uh, shot. You can kind of see those bevel gears up there, right? Here's the one that's on the belt, and here's the one that's on the shaft. I'm now sort of convinced that, yes, their shaft goes all the way straight through. That's something I didn't do in my design because I um, I have a little bit more separation between my inner inner gimbal and, their, and the outer gimbal, whereas they're allowing them to share that same shaft, um, which, which makes great sense. Now, the stuff back here... Um, is still a little bit up to conjecture. Now, there's this arm here. Maybe that pushes... Maybe this is a potentiometer back here that measures the tilt. Um, I would assume that somewhere down here is also the motor because you can see here... This looks like... Maybe this is an encoder on here. This is a potentiometer for measuring the tilt. This is an encoder on this which is the gear up to the bevel gear maybe so that's the pulley uh let's let's continue on a lot of fun stuff in there uh, okay no let's let's continue on 
Now we see the servos, or these two motors that are working these cables that shift the head left and right and front and back. Okay, so you see when they're both moving, it's moving left and right and front and back. When one is moving, it's one direction and the other. Um, this looks... I can never quite tell what some of these things are. I mean, my gut is like, well, that looks like a motor down here because there's some kind of axle. Um, but maybe it's a potentiometer. Maybe this is all part of... Or it could just be part of the whole... Because you'll see it is in line with where the belt is back here. So there's got to be a pulley back here. And again, this could either be an encoder that's attached to the motor, but, but really that, that main motor must be in line here. Oh, now you see it's moving. Okay. Um, maybe from back here we can see that better. Now we already saw the motor that was shifting the flywheel. That was the one that was back here. So we have the flywheel, we have the tilt, we have the two servos, and assume we have the real motor hiding back here. This is a potentiometer measuring this. Yep, that's what that looks like. I'm betting this is an encoder off of the shaft of the real motor in there. All right, so that's kind of the breakdown. Uh, should we run through one more time? I don't know. Let's see. What did I miss? Anything? Uh, I mean, there's lots of stuff in here which are obviously electronics. We think this is the IMU up here, which makes sense because it's on the more stable part of the body. Basically, it's it's uh, uh, the part that's not shifting with the sphere because the sphere, this platform, the innermost platform, not this one, but the innermost platform remains level with regards to the sphere. That's It moves with those with those uh, the discs out on the side there. So that would make sense. Uh, what other stuff? Um, I don't know. I don't. I see. I don't have their. I don't have the budget, so I don't have their their same equipment. <laughs> uh, if they had all IBT twos and Arduinos and cheap uh, Bluetooth stuff in there, I might recognize it more easily. But this is the real deal. Uh, all nice machine parts, obviously. Nice gears up here. Nice pillow blocks and, and bearings. It's beautiful. It's, it's really... I could watch this thing all day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm debating whether or not to do... I, I, I love this idea of having the motors down here. Um, I was looking on Amazon to look for brake pulleys, uh, for, for brake cables. And that's the way to do it. Um, that would that would work in my design, and and I could really even put the motors down in the on the in the main carriage if I wanted to, um, but I don't want to start all over right now. So let's keep going the way we're going for the time being. Yeah, I think I think that's about it. Those are the main motors. So we have one, two, three, four, five motors in there plus the head six. That's pretty good. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm convinced that those are LEDs. They're lensed. They're pointing at lights inside the sphere because they're synchronized with the sphere, which is cool. cool. Uh, you can see the servo for the head over here. That's what spins the head. Nice exposed linear actuator here. All right. So until next time, this is Eric, aka Racer Mice, and uh, on behalf of my Rolling Robots project, here's some BB-8 internals. <laughs>